Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to do a video on polymorphism and specifically static polymorphism. And I wanted to demonstrate a couple of different methods that people uh, use to approach uh, polymorphism and virtual dispatch calls and how it might impact uh, certain types of development or, or high performance uh, applications. So let's take a look at an example and, uh, and dive right into it. So let's start with this classic example of polymorphism here. We have a renderer class, and then we have two derived classes, which both inherit from renderer. Now, renderer is what's called an abstract class, which means that um, it, it, it has unimplemented pure virtual methods, which means we, we specify that a method must exist in any derived classes called render. And we say this equals zero makes it a, a um, a pure virtual method, meaning it has no implementation. So in order to have a renderer, you need to have an implementation for every function. And in order to uh, to make a uh, an object of renderer, then what we have to do is we have to derive from renderer, right, as in uh, the Vulkan and the OpenGL classes here. And we have to actually implement our render function, our render method, in order for our renderer to become a concrete class. So now OpenGL renderer is a, is a concrete implementation of renderer and Vulkan renderer is also a concrete implementation. And these ones you can actually have an instance of. This one you can't, right? Because if we made an instance of renderer, then how would we actually call this render method? It has no implementation. Anyways, I, I assume a lot of people already know this stuff, so let's move on. So we have this main application here which takes a renderer, right? Now, this holds a pointer to a renderer. It's going to receive a pointer to some memory to a renderer. So what we do is in the constructor of this application, we pass a renderer and then we save the pointer to that renderer so that we can then during the lifetime of uh, main application, we can call methods on it. But you'll notice we're not specifying Vulkan or OpenGL or anything. We're just calling the render method directly on that renderer. But what happens at runtime is because this is a virtual function, we get what's called virtual dispatch. And then using a system called vtables, the application knows whether it's calling this or this version, depending on which instance we have. And the way that works is we, we create a renderer. If you look at line 55 here, we, have a, we create this renderer. We create an instance of OpenGL renderer, but we save that instance or we save the pointer to that instance in uh, inside a renderer object here, and or not a, a renderer pointer. So we have a pointer to the base class, and then we pass that to our main application, and then we call run. So main application is receiving an OpenGL renderer, but it doesn't know that, which is what we want. We don't want main application to know about every different type of renderer that's going to exist out there. We just want it to receive the renderer and then to call methods on that renderer. And depending on what we did down here, what uh, version of a renderer we provided, then main application will, will function differently. That's exactly why poly polymorphism is so powerful is that you're able to provide uh, different implementations of, of, of a sort of abstract thing. And, uh, and the, the, the code using those abstract things doesn't need to know about any of the details regarding the different ways those things are implemented, such as uh, main application doesn't know anything about Vulkan or OpenGL or whatever. It just knows I have a render, I want to render. And then we could then take our Vulkan specific code and tuck it away inside here and our OpenGL code and tuck it away here. So polymorphism is very powerful. We understand that. The challenge is that when you have something like this, like a uh, this this is obviously a very stripped down, simple approach to doing some kind of game rendering, right? We're talking about Vulkan and OpenGL renderers. Um, we have this run method here on our main application, and we have our uh, you know let's call it a game loop, right? Obviously, it's very simple and it's not actually a game loop, but any code that runs inside this loop here that's using virtual calls. Uh, will have a, a, a performance penalty because of that virtual call. Because now, because it's uh, we're calling a virtual function, we have to go to the vtable, look up the pointer to the actual implementation that we're going to call because it's a virtual function, and then call that function. There's this level of what's called indirection where we have to go to memory, look something up, and then make the call. It's a very, very minimal performance hit 
uh, when you're talking about regular applications. This is almost not even worth worrying about if you're doing just um, you know a virtual call here and a virtual call there. It's even if it's in a loop, oftentimes it might not even be an issue, but very often if you're doing high performance, you know, you're working on game programming or, you know, financial um, uh, market applications or, or whatever, like these things, like every milli, micro, nanosecond, every little fragment of time counts and people try to shave off a lot of time. And this is um, a, a lot of the applications that use C++ generally are uh, high performance, critical uh, applications that need to shave every little bit of time off of everything. They need to keep RAM use uh, highly optimized and uh, use of time, CPU time, highly optimized. So we generally are going to think twice in an application like this about virtual dispatch right in the what's called the hot path, the critical uh, performance path, right? Like right in the heart of the game loop. We want to shave off as much time as possible inside this loop, right? If 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 we're using virtual calls for other parts, like uh, minimizing the window and dispatching something only when that happens or, or certain events that don't happen all the time, we can use virtual functions without worrying at all. The performance is like minimal, right? This is a very good feature of C++. Don't, I hope uh, nobody misunderstands. But uh, like I said, inside the tight game loop, we have to be careful with, with stuff like this. So here we have another example. We have Vulkan Renderer again. So imagine this is gonna provide some functionality and this class is gonna provide some functionality. Now I'm keeping these very stripped down so I don't waste too much time here. And then we have our main application. Now you could say, okay, well, why don't we create different versions of main application and um, simply provide a different template parameter to main application, right? So this is now, main application is now a templated class. And then we could say in here, we could say T renderer, uh, and we actually have our renderer inside our main application. So app one would have an OpenGL renderer and app two would have a Vulkan renderer. And that would work. That's a great way to do it. But uh, the issue that you might run into in, in different applications of, of this is that, you know, if we wanted to store main application inside of a vector, let's say, and, and still be um, kind of unaware of, of the, the implementation, the renderer implementation that we're using for that particular application. Well, you'll see there's an error here. Use of class template uh, main application requires template argument. That's because you actually need to specify the template uh, argument to the vector, which we obviously can't do, right? A vector would store a homogeneous list of items, right? But uh, these are both, you can't even think of these as main application anymore uh, once they become templated because this is now a main application with an OpenGL renderer and this is now a main application with a Vulkan renderer, two, two completely different types as far as C++ is concerned, right? This template generates code for us and now these are two completely different classes. Even though they, they're still called main application, to the type system, they're, they're now two completely distinct things so you can't put them in a vector, right? You can't do this anymore. All right, in this example, we have a different approach to uh, using templates. And um, the way this works is, the first thing I'll show you actually is we, we read this parameter that's uh, passed in from the terminal or from the command line. And uh, that parameter is the actual render that we want to launch our application with. Then we take that parameter, that string, and we pass it to this factory function here called create application which actually gives us um, a polymorphic type uh, of our application with a different renderer inside it, depending on what we actually passed. The way that's meant to be used is by running the application with a renderer of some sort. So whether that's Vulkan or running it with OpenGL or some junk, which we'll use the fallback, you know, our software renderer. Uh, regardless, we're able to switch out the configuration for our application at runtime and be able to use a different renderer instance inside of our application. And the way that works is, um, and by the way, take a look at this, right? Like this is just an application. This isn't, this doesn't tell us what type we just got back from here, but it just tells us that we have an app, an application, and we're able to call run on it, right? And if we go to our application, um, what you'll see is that all it has is these two methods. It's got a virtual destructor 
and it's got a pure virtual run method, which I'll uh, describe uh, a little bit further. But it's just a base class to an application that has a run function, which actually kickstarts the application itself. So if we go back here, we'll see how do we actually make it? Well, it's pretty simple. It's a very simple concept. We get the string in, which is, let's call it our configuration. We, uh, that could be uh, the string Vulkan or the string OpenGL or anything else, we'll use our fallback renderer. Uh, and depending on what that string is, we're returning a different type of application with a different type of renderer. But this type is not what we actually return, we're actually returning an application. And uh, this application type doesn't carry with it any of the type parameters right, that we're, we're actually passing in or the type arguments that we're passing in, uh, it's only returning a pointer to the base class of main application. So what's main application? Let's actually, oops, let's go up here and look at that. Well, main application is a templated class which inherits from application, which I just showed you. And based on the template it receives, it holds a different instance of a renderer. And then when it starts up in its constructor, it initializes that renderer and it also provides an implementation for that pure virtual run method that I showed earlier. And uh, as you can see, this is actually where our loop is. So you might say, okay, well, you're still calling a virtual method, but it doesn't really matter because our goal is to get rid of the virtual calls inside the loop, which we've managed to do. Uh, we don't care that we're calling a virtual method once to start the loop. That doesn't affect our performance. What affects our performance is what happens inside the loop. And that's exactly what we've managed to do is now get rid of those virtual calls while still maintaining some flexibility and being able to provide a different renderer or to start our application with a different renderer. Now, obviously, the, the power in the initial example was to actually be able to switch that renderer on the fly and be able to um, uh, provide a different pointer to a different renderer at runtime without actually recreating this main application. So obviously it's not the same thing, but in a lot of cases you might not actually even need, like in order to restart the application or switch out the renderer, you might have to actually restart the application. So it, you know, it doesn't really matter. In this situation, we can totally get away with this and, and have uh, an, an implementation of this application that, that can work with any type of renderer without actually making any dynamic or virtual dispatch calls. And that's exactly what we want. Now, if we wanted the power of swapping in the renderer in and out at runtime, and if we actually were willing to write the kind of code that could do that, then obviously this wouldn't suit it very well. But in a lot of instances where you know things up front uh, at compile time, what types you're gonna use and, and things of that sort, you don't actually need true polymorphism. We just use them because they're, you know, virtual calls are easy to write and easy to implement. And uh, it's a nice clean way of doing uh, polymorphism. Uh, this almost feels like a, a like a template hack, right? You know, in, in in some sense, it's not, but it almost feels like we're kind of doing smoke and mirrors trying to achieve polymorphism, uh, and in a way we are. But um, it doesn't matter because it's serving the purpose that we set out to uh, that that we actually wanted. It's it's solving the problem that we tried to solve, and it's letting us write this kind of generic code, right? Like we don't know anything about Vulkan or OpenGL inside this class. We just know we have a renderer. It's got some type and we can call render on it and that's it. And if we call, if we tried to call something else on it, then it would fail. Right. Um, so that solves our problem. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I hope that was informative. Um, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Uh, if you think this could be useful in something that you're doing and uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.